Hey, good morning, snowbirds. Good to see you this morning.
of compassion. God, that you'd give us hearts of mercy for one another, Jesus. God, that you take judgment out of our hearts and you replace it with, with love, mercy, with grace. Jesus, we believe that you are a God who still does what we're singing about. You still do those things today. You still save the lost. God, you still heal the sick. And God, we believe that you still raise the dead, the physical dead and even the spiritual dead. Jesus. So we pray for that in this room this morning. We pray, would you heal the sick this morning in Jesus' name? For those who are watching this morning, God, would you heal? Would you bring rest? Would you bring comfort? Would you bring hope?
had this picture come to my mind uh, this morning. I had a buddy of mine call and they were going out of town and they got one of those food boxes delivered to their house and they said, hey, can you swing by and just pick that up and then take it home and just prepare it. So I picked up, I felt like one of those people that are like, stealing boxes from porches. So um, I took the box and I got it home and I opened it up and it's these, they're all bagged, it's all fancy, it's like one meal and you have to open it up and it has a recipe and you go through it. And I'm like putting stuff and cutting stuff up that I'd never choose to use. And then this recipe, you had to shape it and form it and pat it and then stick the skewer in it and then fry it. And I was, and then, then you eat it and it was like, wow, that was really good. I would never, ever, ever choose to put those things in what I'm eating. But yeah, when it was all put together and shaped and fried, it was fantastic. And so I'm just thinking of that song that we just sang that says, God, you're shaping my life. God, I need you to soften my heart. I need you to, I need you to, and this is hard to say, hard to sing. I need you to break me apart because I'm broken. And I need to be broken because when I'm broken, I recognize you, Jesus. I recognize you. And there's things that he puts in us and he's doing in us that we would never ever, ever choose. And you might even feel like you're skewered this morning. And you're in the frying pan this morning. And you'd never choose to be there. You'd never choose to take that route. But Jesus is shaping you. He's shaping me.
So I want to encourage you this morning that what God is doing in you is a good thing. For those of you in this room and for those of you that are watching and that, that have chosen to follow Jesus and to, to give everything that you have to lay your life down for him, he is shaping you. His promises still stand today. They're still good for you. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never I'm gonna sing it again. Cause your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail me yet. Jesus, you never fail. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never fail for his promises just as his promises are rolling through your heart and your mind this morning just thank him for his promises Jesus is is being together and I was I know it's tough to get out there get out there and drive around or it's fun <laughs> um, but what brings me confidence is when we're together when I'm together with those of my friends and you are my friends that are following Jesus and we're pressing in together no matter how I'm feeling on the inside it brings me confidence like man God you're just 
you're so real because you're real um, with my friends. And it just brings me confidence. Like, okay, I'm not walking through this life by myself. I'm not alone. And I can do this. I can have confidence in who, who my God is. Amen. So you're not alone this morning. So I want to invite you. I want everybody to go say hi to Gordon Lindstrom this morning. He's, he's the young gentleman right over here. He's one of my buddies. That's why I can pick on him. Um, make sure you say hi to Gordon today. Okay. All right? Okay, go. <laughs> Good morning. This is so fun. Thanks, guys, for finding your seats. Um, I laugh pretty hard because our church is a little empty, so for those of you that are watching us on live stream, you can't see all the seats. But my most favorite part is, is that everyone is sitting in their normal seats, and then there's just tons of empty spots. But, like, I made sure I stay in the back because that's where I sit. Cindy, you sat in the front because that is where you sit. This, Dana, you always sit like right there or right behind, no matter what. Oh yeah, Bob and Patty, you guys sit exactly where you belong. This is, it's just the way we are. We're creatures of habit and that's okay. It is okay that that's what we do. Um, for those of you that make it to church today, hello, we miss you, um, but we're glad you're watching us live. Um, just like Kevin said, it's really good to be together. Um, there's something about being um, in each other's presence that just give us another glimpse of who God is and how much he cares about us. Um, so we're going to thank and just worship the Lord for what he does through us with our tithes and our offerings. So ushers, if you want to come forward and we'll pray. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to be together. Um, thank you for the opportunity to just experience um, your glory through snow. That um, just as you are in the shining bright sun of summertime and the gorgeous ocean, you are also in the peace and the quiet of snow. So while it does bring lots of change and schedules and anxiety, I pray that we will also experience your peace. Um, uh, flow through us as we give to you, as we serve those around us, as we um, take this opportunity of Snowmageddon to um, show your love and to be available to our neighbors and to the people making not super smart decisions driving. Help us to just be the people that say, that's okay, how can I help? Let me be there. Um, let us be your, um, your hands and your feet, God. Thank you for this community that we get to call home of RCC. Thank you that you are continuing to bless this building. Um, thank you that you have made our ties and our offerings to stretch, stretch, stretch um, to meet the needs of this community, Lord. We are so honored and blessed to be part of what you're doing. In your name, amen. Ashers, if you want to go ahead and pass the baskets. Um, tonight, 
Bunko night. People, it's still happening because we have Kevin who loves to drive in the snow. I also love to drive in the snow. I think this is really fun. Um, so just a show of hands, we have almost enough people to play one round of Bunko. Apparently you need 12 people. Um, so we have like nine. Is there anybody here that is planning on coming even if it still snows? Miss Krista? Awesome, Sydney's bringing people from Teen Challenge. This is awesome. Kim's coming, Janet's coming. Okay, Kevin, you're gonna get 12 people. It's gonna happen. This is gonna be good. So, everybody, Bunko, five to seven. And you know what? This is not the worst place to get trapped. There are goldfish crackers. I know where the chips are stashed. It's gonna be fine. Oh, bring a snack to share. This is just if you get stuck overnight. <laughs> There's blankets in the nursery. It's gonna be fine. Crackers, all the things. All right, and Thursday, February 14th, yes, it is Valentine's Day, and what a better way to spend kind of an awkward holiday where all that's gonna happen is expectations will not be met on Valentine's Day. So how about we come and worship God and just have some prayer worship and just say, that's right, our expectations are in you, Lord, and not in each other. Um, it's not pressure to do anything perfect for a loved one, but it's a, just an outpouring of love that we have for God. That's how I wanna spend my Valentine. So I hope you guys are here as well. Um, Sunday, February 17th, wildfire auction. It's just about here, people. If you are planning to come and have not gotten your ticket, buy your ticket. You could even do it right now while I'm talking. I'm fine with that. I won't be, I, my feelings will not be hurt if you are on your phone buying your ticket right now to be at the auction. So we'd love to have you there. February 22nd and February 23rd is our um, February gatherings for the Woven Women. And we'll be doing a dinner and a brunch just to kind of um, stay together, be focused on God, have an opportunity to meet um, and just be together and just talk a little bit about what God is doing. Um, it's gonna be a really good time. I'm excited for what um, we'll be doing women's ministry throughout the rest of the year. Um, but the gatherings are a great opportunity, ladies, for you to just stay connected with one another as we are doing different events and um, headed forward into 2019. Lastly, I want to mention World Changers for Christ. That would be our Two North Kids teachers. Um, we are starting a new round of teaching. Um, Marcy, when is the next session begin of teachers? April. Okay, so we are looking for teachers for the next six months starting in April, um, and you'll be a month on, a month off to teach our awesome kids, to be with them, to encourage them, to follow a great curriculum that makes it simple for you, um, to be with the kids and to show them God. This is, if you have not taught before, this is going to be your opportunity, because I know that every person in this room has not taught before. If you haven't tried it, just try it once. I told Jennifer, now Thompson, she used to be Jennifer Sampson, that try it, you won't die. So she tried the nursery and she came to me and she said, you know what? Not for me, but I want you to know that I didn't die. And I said, I'm really proud of you. And she goes, I'm sticking with coffee. I got, I'm an adult person. I got coffee. And I said, awesome. Now, you know, so all of you, you won't die. Just try it because the kids are totally worth it. Totally, totally worth it. I'm going to stop there. Oh, sure. Oh, it's up there. Oh, yes. Love your neighbor. So um, Kevin Oywak mentioned last week that we are starting a uh, just a brief um, donation gathering for Love Your Neighbor, which is um, to love our neighbors, who, which is the Reach Hope Center for Hope. They are in downtown Renton, and it is a homeless shelter. And it's a family shelter, which is really cool, because there's not a lot of family shelters. It's usually men or women and children. So having a place that is for an entire family, I think is really, really unique and exceptionally important. Um, so we have a relationship with them and they just gave us some of their needs. They're just very specific that they need right now. Um, they are on a little list. They're also up there. You can grab a list in the back as you leave and just grab a couple extra things um, to throw into our bin, which is back by the front doors. A little bit of cereal. They need some deodorant, um, laundry detergent, disinfectant wipes, and garbage bags. We can all grab an extra box of those while we're at the store. Um, we have until February 24th, then Marcy, I believe Marcy and Pam will be delivering those to uh, Reach to just show them that we love them. They're our neighbors. Pastor Alex. Wonderful. Thank you, hon. Good morning, church. Hey, I, I understand uh, we're the only church open in the state of Washington this morning. And so either that makes us absolute idiots or we're amazing Christians, one or the other. I'm <laughs> not quite sure. I'm sure that's not totally true, but it's kind of cool that um, you guys 
our go for it type of people. Hey, a couple of things uh, we have to do this morning before we get into the word. And uh, the first one is we've got some birthdays to honor. Uh, three birthdays, and they're all three here, actually. It's amazing. Adrian was born on February 4th, uh, several years ago, but that was last Sunday. And then Brandon and Kevin were both born on the same exact day, February 11, which is tomorrow. tomorrow. So, Adrian, can you please stand? Kevin, Pastor Kevin, can you please stand? Brandon, would you please stand? I just want you to know that we are really thankful for you. You guys are huge additions to the kingdom of God, and it's unbelievable that we have the honor and privilege of being your friends. So we want to honor you. Can we do that? How about everybody? Let's sing happy birthday. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you, you and you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Brandon, Adrian, and Kevin. Happy birthday to you. Yeah. Hey Amen. What a gift and a blessing. Well, speaking of births, uh, we have the honor of also dedicating a brand new baby to the Lord Jesus this morning. And his name is Samuel, born to Bakhtiar and Irina. You too, would you like to come and bring your child and your family? Your kids want to come too? So we can pray for your new baby brother. Oh, look at this guy. He's so relaxed. Hi. Hi. Yeah, I can hold him. I'd love to hold him. Hi. Hi, Mr. Baby Boy. Hi. Look at him. He's so mellow. I love this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, this is uh, Bakhtiar and Irina. And they're from Kazakhstan. They've been here for how long? Almost five years now. And they're awesome children. Delia, uh, Annalisa, Ishmael, and Romel. That's right. Anyway, these guys are an awesome family. And they got one more. His name is Samuel. And, uh, you know, Samuel means either God hears or he is heard by Samuel. So either way, you know the story of Samuel. He's the one that kept hearing this voice in the temple and kept running to the priest and saying, did you call me? And the priest said, nope, that was God. That was God. So I want all of us, family, to lay hands on baby Samuel. And we will pray. If you could reach out your hands, let's bless him and dedicate him to the Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you so much for this precious gift from you, Lord God. We praise and thank you that you are the author of Samuel's life and you will be the finisher of his faith. And so we dedicate him to you right now in Jesus' mighty name and ask that he would grow into the man and the voice and even the prophet that you have designed him to be. Give Bakhtiar and Irina and even his siblings, Lord, wisdom on uh, how to raise him and how to care for him, how to be great examples for him, how to wisely teach him, Lord God, how to keep him close to you. And Father, we right now also pray for protection from all the wiles of our adversary, that Samuel would be shielded, Lord God, and that every trial he does go through, Lord, he would come out victorious. We bless him and dedicate him to your purposes now in Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. I love you, boy. Yeah. So welcome. Bless you. Hallelujah. You're welcome. God bless you. We're going to mail you a certificate, okay? Yep, get that in the mail. Oh, by the way, our, um, my assistant, Anna Garcia, has been out of the office sick all week, and uh, she had been going back and forth about when to have our new council election. And we kind of planned it for today, but the word didn't really get out, so we're not going to do it today. In case you heard that we were voting on council members, probably do it next week. If it's awful weather, we might do it the following week as well. So anyway, thanks for being here. Really proud of you for just making the effort. I, I enjoyed the drive. I actually uh, took a drive up here yesterday to see if I could make it today. And uh, what was so exciting is I have a new vehicle. I haven't driven in the snow with this vehicle. I mean, I had it for two years, but I, I've never driven in the snow with it. And my last one was a rear-wheel drive, and it was, just a, it was just terrible. So it was really scary. So now I have front-wheel drive where you can push a button, and it goes into all-wheel drive if needed. And so I made it here like no sweat. And I'm going, no wonder people buy these cars. They're just awesome. And like they can do everything. I felt no scary stuff, no danger or anything else. 
So I got up here, and it's just like a winter wonderland. I mean, it was just gorgeous. And as I was coming up the hill at 140, I was asking the question, what is whiter than snow? Because for some reason, that thought just kept coming to me. What's whiter than snow? How could anything be whiter than this? The thing about snow is even salt water, when it evaporates, leaves the salts and all of the other nutrients behind. The only thing that evaporates into the clouds is pure water. That's why when snow falls, it falls with nothing else in it except pure water. I mean, sure, it can collect smog particles on the way down. We know that. But in its original state, snow is absolutely pure. And I was kept thinking this, this phrase in my mind, what's whiter than snow? And then I realized that's, that's what Jesus has done for us. So I started doing a little research, like where did that phrase come from? Where was it first said? And, and what is this all about? And I, I mean, we all know, yeah, it's about forgiveness and, you know. But, but I began doing a little research and going, this is absolutely stunning. The way God describes what he has done for us through Christ. I actually have a third part of my discipling series that um, I had prepared for today, but I knew it would be a light crowd, and, and I'm just so passionate about what I want to share with that, I decided to wait on that one. So I just got a little devotional this morning. So I'm thinking about this, this idea, this concept of something being whiter than snow, and um, the cool thing I noticed while I was driving up the road and looking at all the trees, especially here on the hill, I mean, I live down kind of in the valley, so it's not as much snow, is everything that's green just about is now white. Everything that's brown and dead is now white. And every ugly pothole and every piece of gravel and dirt on the ground is now white. It's just a blanket that covers everything. And it's indiscriminate. Snow doesn't choose where to fall. It just covers everything. So I'm thinking about this going, that's, that's really a, a pretty phenomenal concept that when God looks at us after we're forgiven, he calls us whiter than snow. So let's take a look at some verses. There's a, the first one I want to look at is in Daniel, chapter 7, verse 9. And this is where we get one of the images of God. And his image is, there's a whole lot of white in him. And I'm not talking about skin color, by the way. I don't think God is a race. He is, if anything, he is all races boiled into one. And from him, all races came. So I'm not talking about skin color. He's talking about something about his nature and his character. Daniel says, As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days, who is God, took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool, and his throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. So we've got three pictures of the nature of God himself being really white. And so you look at the first one, and it's not whiter than snow. He's just white as snow. So he's like equal to the whiteness or maybe the purity of snow. So before we ever talk about what Jesus did for us and how it affects our lives, we need to look at the nature of God. We need to say whatever, hap whatever he is has happened to us through the blood of Christ, through believing in Jesus. And so if we think about the first one, his clothing is white as snow. Now, you have to know that when humans are receiving visions of heaven and the nature and presence of God, they can only choose from the vocabulary that they already possess. They can't invent new words that nobody understands. So they're just picking things that, you know, this is an earthly example, a metaphor that somebody will, will understand. So first of all, his clothing is white as snow. Okay, so you're thinking perfect, pure, without wrinkle, without blemish, without stain, without spot. But the second part is interesting. The hair of his head was white like wool. And I thought about that, and I'm going, you know, wool in its natural state is not very white. Have you ever just seen sheared, shorn lambs when it first falls off onto the ground? It's pretty grungy. I mean, it's, it's kind of beigey with bugs in it, and it's kind of bristles, and it's, it's not really that clean. But back in the day, they would bleach, literally with a fuller's cleanser. They would bleach the wool, so it would be, Brandon, show us your shoes. Those are white shoes, man. That's how white the wool would come out. Those are beautiful shoes. I love them. I just saw that. that. You should be in there. You should be in that Bible verse. At any rate, 
so there's a second thing. It's not only God's nature that he is pure and perfect, but there's also a process that has to take place for natural wool in its natural state, which is not very white, to become white. So there's a cleansing, sort of a churning that they begin to process the wool be before they begin to, uh, begin to spin it. But the final one is, I, I think, the most powerful. His throne was flaming with fire. How many of you know that the hottest part of the flame is the white tip? If you can get it to become white. The yellow is the coolest. The blue is hotter than that. But very rarely, unless you've got a super hot fire, do you have a white tip? The very hottest part of the fire. We're talking about the nature of God. He is absolutely pure and clean, unlike anything we can conceive of. I mean, Brandon's shoes, probably when you get to heaven, they'll look kind of tan. You know, they're just not nearly as bright as the purity and the holiness of God. So if that's kind of the starting point, if God is going to do something in and for and through us in, in terms of being forgiven, being cleansed, putting our past behind us, giving us a bright future, that's the starting point. We will become more pure, more white, more cleansed than anything we've ever imagined on earth. So what's the point? The point is we have an adversary. His name is the devil. His name is Satan. And he is an expert at reminding us of our shortcomings and our failures, our past, present, and even future potential failures. And so we often come to worship, we often come to God, we often come to prayer, or come and hang around with other Christians, and we begin to feel kind of like, I'm sort of less than. But the fact is, in Christ, we are brighter than bright, whiter than white, because of his forgiveness. It's absolutely complete. So what we have to do then is begin starting to employ faith, which to me, I call it a mental gymnastics. I've got, to, I've got to take what my senses are telling me and believe what God has told me. I don't really care how I feel. God says, pure, perfect, without blemish, whiter than snow. Why is this important? Well, Kevin mentioned earlier that um, when we look at one another, we need to not be judgmental. We need not compare. We shouldn't be avoiding people because we think they're less than. We need to see with those eyes as well that they are pure, perfect, completely cleansed. And sure, they've got some shortcomings in terms of, you know, my personality is not perfect. Yours isn't either. We've got some idiosyncrasies that are not helpful, and we kept falling into stuff that's not fun, not good, not very friendly or kind. We all have some things, some wrinkles about us, but in Christ, we are perfect, whiter than snow, flaming, pure white, and cleansed. We were on the hill in my backyard uh, Monday, and uh, we live on a hill, and our backyard has an upper, we call it the upper, upper 40 and the lower 40. It's only, it's only a quarter of an acre, so there's no 40 acres, but and we got this flat part on top, and there's the big grass slope down to the bottom. And uh, then there's a, a hedge at the base of that, and then there's a wall that holds the hedge up, and then it's about an eight-foot drop to the street. So um, Marcelo and Claire brought their kids over because that's historically been our sledding hill. I mean, I used to make ramps, jumps, and bank turns and everything. And I mean, when there was enough snow, I used to have a blast with our kids. So now it's their turn. So they brought the kids over, and um, I didn't realize, but Marcelo had never been on a sled before. He's from a non-snow country, Peru. And so, uh, yeah, well, they have snow in the mountains, of course, but not where he lived. So anyway, that was pretty thrilling all by itself. So he got on the sled that we had, and uh, he just went flying down. And of course, the thing is, you have to stop before you hit the bushes. So he kept going <laughs> into the hedge. But then it was Lucas' turn. And before we found the sled, I found, actually found a kneeboard in my garage. We don't own a sled. So the kneeboard worked great. But before we found that, um, Claire and Marcella said, let's, Let's use our laundry basket. That's like smooth plastic, kind of roundy, you know? And so if they'd run this before. Last time it snowed, they, they put a rope around it, and they dragged Luca across the street over to our house, and Luca's just having a blast on flat ground. So now it's Luca's turn. He's at the top of the hill, and Marcella goes, OK, buddy, <laughs> puts him in the basket and slides him down the hill. And there's a pretty steep spot, and he just rolled head over heels like this and came up with a face full of snow. I mean, literally, they could not have seen his face, just crunched on there. There was no kid. There was just a white ball of snow. Now, before that, his cheeks were like red as beets because of the cold. 
And so now he went from like red to white, like in a second. Boom. The best part was he didn't cry. He thought that was pretty darn fun. He was, he was just a real trooper. But then we put, you know, brush the snow off, finally now his cheeks are super red because he really was freezing. And I'm thinking that's, that's kind of what Jesus does when he talks about our sin being scarlet, but I'm going to make you white as snow. I thought, what a visual aid, Lord. That's so cute. Just instantly, smack, boom, instant cleansing. And that's exactly what the next verse says. This one from Isaiah. Verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 18b, says, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red as crimson, they shall be like wool. And there's the wool reference again. The thing I love about this is that our awareness, our self-awareness of our weaknesses and, our, again, our history and our past, we're so conscious of the scarlet part. And... Uh, Everybody in the family looked at Luca and meant we are all conscious of his red cheeks. And sometimes that's what the enemy wants to do is keep reminding us of, you still got red cheeks, man. You still got some scarlet issues. And we have to literally do the work of faith and say, no, that may be true in the here and now, but in the eyes of Almighty God, I'm white as snow. I'm white as snow. We need to kind of put that patch right on our face and just wear it sometimes. There's a third verse that I, that I love. It's um, the one that we're very familiar with in Psalm 51. Where David is confessing his sin. He had, um, in a weak moment, saw a young lady from his balcony as the king, from his palace somewhere, and some young lady on a roof somewhere was bathing. And uh, he was tempted to go have some time with her. And... Uh, they conceived a child. Once they conceived, David realized she was married. David then decided, rather than letting her husband come and kill him, David would have to have him killed while he was on the battlefield. And so if you know the story, he had this really kind of um, manipulative, sort of intricate plan to make sure that her husband got killed, but it didn't look like murder. And so now David's guilty of two things, adultery and murder. And number three, now he's trying to hide it from everybody. And Samuel comes along. Interesting, it was Samuel. Comes along and says, Nathan. I'm sorry. Nathan. It was Nathan. Oh my gosh, thank you. I really need you here. <laughs> Appreciate it. It was Nathan. Nathan comes along and exposes him and says, David, you're guilty of three things. Adultery, murder, and lying. And so David, as we know, is a man that God calls, a man after my own heart, and somehow this man of really shallow character at some points of his life is now being declared a man after God's own heart. And so because of his willingness to admit to Nathan, I am the man. This is what I've done. Because of that, and then because he begs for mercy from God. Here's what David knows to be true about him now. He says, surely you desire truth in the innermost parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be what? Whiter than snow. So this is what blows my mind. Like this is one of the most extreme examples of going off the rails against the ways of God. And yet he gets the most extreme description of forgiveness. That, that's just so cool. Now, by the way, this um, cleansed me with hyssop. Hyssop is kind of the little herb plant that was used oftentimes to sprinkle blood on the bulls. It was the, the herb that Moses commanded the Israelites to sprinkle the blood of the lamb on their doorposts. So hyssop was kind of a vehicle for transferring the blood of the sacrificed animal into a particular location. Sometimes it was onto the shoulders of the priest to kind of declare them holy and belonging to the Lord. So hyssop was kind of a tool used in this forgiveness process. And David says, I, I get that. Just the way the sacrifice cleanses all of the Israelites and protects the homes from the angel of death 
So also I'm counting on God with whatever tool he wants to use, whatever implement he wants to use to transfer me from this place of darkness and condemnation to absolute forgiveness whiter than snow. And I'm thinking, well, what does that symbolize? What kind of tools does God use for us? And God is so good. I was um, home with my wife yesterday, Saturday, yeah. And I was really trying to be a good husband. And I generally try to be a good husband. I thought, you know what's going to bless her is if I fold the laundry. If I fold the laundry, she asked me every now and then to help her out, but most of the time she goes, I'll take care of it. <laughs> you just make a mess of everything. I'll take care of it. But this time I decided, I'm not going to wait for her to ask. I'm folding laundry this morning. So I folded up everything in the dryer, you know, shook it out, straightened it out, did my best job, put it all back in the basket. And then I realized, oh, the washer's still full. We got wet clothes. They need to go into the dryer. So I'm going, I'm going to do that too. Like, I'm such, ah, such a hero. Holy moly. Valentine's Day's coming up. It's going to pay off. So I take everything out of the washer, throw it in the dryer, and I even shook out things, you know, get all the twists and knots out and everything else. Do it in there, put it on high. Those babies are going to dry in a minute, man. It's going to be great. And then I went out, I did a couple of errands and came back, and I came in, she was in the laundry room, which is the way I come through the garage into the laundry room, and she's looking at me like, I go, what? What? You are not helpful. You are not helping me. Some things need to be hung up. Other things need to have a little spray and wash on them. And then a few things need to go in the dryer, but not on high. And it suddenly occurred to me, oh, the way things get clean and dry is not always the same. Different tools, different methods, different ways for hanging, spraying, or throwing them in the dryer, some on high and some on medium. And the Lord said, that's exactly what I do with you. You're cleansing, sure. It comes through the blood of Christ. It happened once. It happened when he hung on the cross. It happened when you came to him. But there's a lot of detail in terms of making it a reality. Just the way clothes all don't dry the same way. You and I don't experience cleansing all the same way. For some, it's like a bolt from heaven. We get it, we're convicted, we confess, and we're free. For others, it's a long, arduous battle. And we just go in and out and up and down. And the cleansing in reality doesn't happen overnight. For others, it needs outside input. I need counsel. I need accountability. I need someone to help me. I need someone to carry me. Or for others, it's, I'm so broken, I can't even tell which way is up or what clean looks like because of my past. And so I love that David, who's really one of the most extreme examples of someone who's gone off the rails in sin, gives us the most beautiful description, whiter than snow, of what it's like to be forgiven. So this morning I want to really just wrap it up by, by saying again for this new year and in this snowy season, every time you see the snow fall, we just say, thank you, Lord, you've made me cleaner than that, whiter than that. I am forgiven. I am not condemned. There is no condemnation. I am not going down. I'm going up. And Lord, whatever method is best for this piece of clothing, <laughs> this garment called me, so that cleansing becomes reality, not just a theological idea, I'm in. Because all fabrics are different. All humans are different. Our needs are different. But every time you see the snow fall, and it's going to snow again tonight, I hear, right? Like an inch or two. And then Dana said like five to ten inches on Tuesday. Woohoo! I love it. There's going to be a lot of whiter than snow out there. But just imagine this, what God has done through his son in you. If you accept it, if you say, Lord, I, I need this, it's important for us to embrace the identity that he has given us in his son Jesus. So what's, what's the next step? A good step is um, courage to confess our sins to God, I believe really is not born out of shame. It's not born out of condemnation or feeling horrible. It's not born out of someone pointing their long bony finger at us. The courage to confess our sin is born out of safety. When we know that ahead of time, Jesus has already declared us righteous, clean, whiter than snow. Because we're already accepted and safe, that's why we can come to him and say, I know you won't kill me. But the truth is, here's what I did. 
or here's what I've been, where I've been, what I've thought. Thank you for paying the price for me. I receive it now. It's really a very simple thing. Confession and forgiveness don't have to be a heavy, difficult, painful, shameful, humiliating experience. If we really understand what Jesus has done when he came to die in our place. Does that sound like good news? Yeah. Amen. It's just a simple reminder that we're going to need until the day we die. I find it interesting that John the Apostle in his first letter, he wrote this. He said, my children, do not sin. And kind of, you know, okay. But if you do sin, we have an advocate. He sort of expects normal humans to struggle. And that will happen and occur for the rest of our lives. So we never want to get beyond the point of confession, repentance, and forgiveness. That's got to be a lifestyle. A lifestyle. Not to take God's grace for granted, but just to not ever get to the point where we're now scared of God. Scared of being open and honest with Him. He's made us whiter than snow. Can we stand together? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we just want to thank you for what you've already done for us. Already. It's past. It's history. Jesus hung on the cross. We don't have to. He rose from the dead, and we shall as well. So, Father, help us to embrace what you've already done for us and help us to even, to another degree, Lord, become more open and honest with you more open, open and honest with a couple of people that we trust so that the tools of our cleansing can rapidly make us more like you. As rapidly as possible, Father. Help us to be in agreement with you and what you're up to and what you're doing in our lives. Not hiding, not running, not pretending. Because, Lord, we want to be whole people. We want to be happy people. We want to be fruitful and productive people, people that honor and glorify you and help advance the cause of your son. Thank you, Lord, for making us whiter than snow. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, may God bless you. Drive safely. You got a couple hours before the next onslaught. <laughs> and, uh, give somebody a hug before you go, okay?